So let me share my desktop then. And uh, and um, uh, from the very beginning, first things that I want to say, I want to congratulate all of you uh, and uh, us, um, ourselves, myself and Rosie, because we can be proud of the fact that uh, we have accomplished basically all Kiko workshops in 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 all uh, those member associations that were supposed to start implementation of RBM this year, so congratulations goes at the first place to you because you were the uh, ones mostly engaged into this process, starting from uh, preparation until uh, when they your RBM implementation plans were developed and submitted uh, to regional office. So thank you very much for this uh, commitment, for a great job that was done. And yeah, let's see how we develop now from now on when the real, real work starts, right? Okay, today uh, we're going to have really a short Call, I would say, uh, and the objective for of our today's session is just to give you some updates on on development of RBM on regional as well on a global level, uh, and also to give you some kind of outlook of what can we expect in 2019 in terms of um, global developments, as I have mentioned, but also in terms of um, actions that will be completed. Uh, conducted it by in your member associations and what kind of support actually you could expect from our site maybe we could also devote a bit of a time uh, to discuss this uh, also what we are looking forward to we want to hear a little bit from your site about um, how do you feel at this stage uh, regarding implementation of RBM? When you look back, what are the issues you would like to uh, highlight, highlight from, from this kickoff process, from first steps on implementation? And Rosie will support us and will facilitate this session. And uh, basically, last but not least, um, we want also to update you a little bit on our on how the regional RBM project uh, develops. What are the activities that we are implementing in regional RBM project team that actually have certain connection, not even certain, but a strong connection to to what you will be doing in 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 your countries, and uh, of course, any open questions, answers that we can uh, discuss during this call. Rosie, anything from your side to add to this? No, nothing okay. to add. Thanks. So let's go. The first thing that I wanted just to share with you, it does not concern you that um, directly, but still to have some overview of what is the vision on a global and a regional level for implementation of RBM. Uh, when we started the whole process, we, we were quite ambitious, as usual by the way, and we were thinking that it is possible uh, by end of 2020 to achieve, um, to cover 70% of member association with um, RBM implementation. In this respect, we, uh, what we mean by that, that at least we would be able by 2020 to start of the process, to kick off the process is 70% of our member associations. And respectively, we hope that once the process is kicked off, that in 50% out of those 70, uh, member associations will be able to achieve standard level of RBM, at least in one program location. However, as you can see on this slide, uh, we realized that probably we were, we were over ambitious and this understanding um, is, uh, was equally just shared by all regions and this is what also our colleagues um, in international office uh, um, realized that maybe we were a bit 
uh, over ambitious and the most probably the target um, for implementation of RBM, a global target as well as regional target will be reduced from 70% to 50% by 2020. So it would be that uh, by end of 2020 we would be able most probably to cover, to start the implementation process in not more than 12, maximum 13 member associations. So this is just for you to know how many member associations would come on board in the coming years and um, yeah, this is what we will be monitoring of course and we'll try to um, uh, stay within this frame at least as regard to uh, achieving standard level of RBM that's for sure when you start implementation in a first program you would expect that at least um, by third year, by the end of third year of implementation, this specific location would be, of course, expected to achieve standard RBM level. And what we could observe from um, existing RBM Kiko workshops, basically all of you, all member associations, were planning to achieve standard level in a first location, maximum within the uh, first three years. So let's see how we uh, manage uh, and how we achieve this objective. We will follow up on this together with you and how we are going to do that. Um, I will explain just in a few minutes. Uh, status quo. As you know, um, we planned um, four uh, RBM Kiko workshops this year. However, in this slide you can see that um, Macedonia, where the RBM workshop was conducted at the end of 2017, is also considered to be part of this first wave country, so to say. And uh, in total, we, yeah, we consider them to be part of this uh, first wave and we say that five RBM Kiko workshops are accomplished and approximately uh, 65 or, or even 70 co-workers trained in all those five member associations. Um, according with the process of RBM implementation, you know that uh, majority of you actually, um, yeah, um, Belarus, Uzbekistan and also Bosnia, you were um, asked to prepare a project charter which would explain in detail implementation outlook in the entire um, uh, as member, in, 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 in entire uh, association covering all program locations that you have in the country and um, after you developed a project charters and as you know better than me even more detailed implementation plans were submitted by you and in this case we are really happy and proud that we have right now uh, implementation plans from all your countries and this of course should support you at the first place but also us to follow up uh, on implementation of RBM to see whether you have managed to achieve those objectives that you planned for specific programs, if not why and how can we support you in the process in the course of implementation of RBM. What we could observe during all the workshops, without any exception, I would say, uh, is a high engagement of uh, co-workers, quite high interest, uh, all workshops were participatory, um, and uh, of course it gives certain um, indication and assumption that uh, the process will continue will continue now under your supervision, under your support that you are supposed to provide uh, to programs, to specific locations. And what we could observe as the kind of a rule, I would say, for all member associations, among key priorities for implementation of RBM, among those components that are uh, that are forming the key elements of having RBM implemented in programs. Um, all countries are interested to develop results frameworks or logical frameworks for existing programs. Uh, 
and um, respective monitoring and evaluation plans or systems that will really support them to track changes, to make sure that their programs are working uh, towards achieving results in the best interest of program participants. And um, this is very clearly a uh, major priority for member associations. However, and most probably and then you will share um, um, those additional priorities that you defined um, in your implementation plans. But what we could see, um, there is also interest in conducting needs assessment uh, for existing programs. There is also interest to strengthen your results framework and monitoring and evaluation plans with baseline assessment, with baseline studies. So. Um, these are some of the components that we could clearly observe are, um, are most important currently uh, to make sure that RBM is implemented uh, in programs. So as regard to key milestones or how we see uh, on the regional level in of course, discussion in cooperation with member association, the outlook uh, of implementing RBM uh, in countries is that, as you can see, um, in the first year we have uh, five member associations um, that joined implementation process and that should be supported also next year as part of follow-up. And also in 2019, we'll have in three newcomers. <laughs> Albania, Lithuania, and Kosovo expressed interest to implement RBM in programs uh, in their member associations, and respectively, these are the three countries that will be actively supported by us in the same way as we provided support to you. There will be most probably a uh, first intro meeting uh, organized for NDs and NPDDs, like Likewise, we had our first meeting in Vienna, if you remember, in April 2018. Uh, and of course, this, me is this uh, first um, intro meeting will be followed then by in-country RBM uh, Kiko workshops uh, for selected programs in selected locations. And then, as we can at this stage only estimate, but uh, we are thinking of um, implementing RBM in 2020s and in um, five member associations, which you can see in Armenia, Kyrgyzstan, Serbia, Ukraine, and Georgia. Uh, this is a, these are remaining member associations from those uh, from the group of those member associations that are not self-reliant. Um, and of course, we are more than open and happy to support those member associations that are already or will be self-reliant as of 2020. <coughs> Sorry, but this is very, this would very much depend on the willingness of those member associations. <laughs> because as you know, they won't be um, supported financially. These member associations, self-sufficient member associations, are not entitled uh, to action for federation money budget, but uh, of course, technically, with knowledge, expertise, with facilitation of RBM workshops, we are there to support them in case of interest. Um, this is our, I think, outlook, right? Rosie, would you like to add anything? Um, no, I think um, in terms of kind of, I mean, of course, next year, even though those are the three newcomers, we'll, we'll be supporting MAs, um, and, and especially you, who have already started um, rollout in 2018, and we'll uh, talk a little bit about the, the planned support uh, measures a little bit later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, do you have any questions or maybe any suggestions to us based on your experience when you see this outlook or when you now recall back in your mind the RBM Kiko workshops? Yes, um, maybe I can just jump in. 
uh, what is actually kind of foggy uh, for me, what was foggy for me from the beginning is this time frame, because uh, you can probably know that uh, mm -hmm. in SOS Children's Village in Bosnia and Herzegovina we used to pilot things a lot during mm -hmm. our history and whatever was piloted it was happening like you know promptly within one year two years maximum uh, of, of, of some kind of implementation or start of implementation mm -hmm. and uh, our idea was that everything should be done promptly and uh, very fast and swiftly when it comes to establishment of result-based management system in, in mm -hmm. SOS Children's Villages, Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is actually not feasible at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is actually my message uh, for all the others that will participate in this process. Uh, from day one, just uh, be clear with them and mm -hmm. tell them this is the process that needs to last few years and this is, it, it is not going to happen within uh, one year or, or few months or something like that. Uh, we have four programs, CVPs in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, and we decided that one of them is our priority for next period. But uh, we, uh, as usually, always have some kind of hidden agenda. And mm -hmm. the hidden agenda is to uh, follow Mm -hmm. uh, the steps that uh, our pilot or, or chosen uh, CVP uh, will make uh -huh. uh, and follow it by all other three uh, CVPs. Mm -hmm. And this is why, why uh, it is very complicated to have it all done uh, within some short period of time, mm -hmm. which, which was our idea at the beginning. So we, we were so enthusiastic, everything will, will be happening within months and within uh -huh. one year. So now, uh, thinking of our uh, calendar of activities and uh, plans for the, for the future and actually um, uh, for the date uh, uh, on which we are expecting our CVP Gracanca to become uh, uh, standard level, to reach standard level uh, mm -hmm. of RBM, uh, we are aware that it is not going to happen uh, until the end of next year, for example, or, or early mm -hmm. 2020. Mm -hmm. So this is something that is uh, that was burden on our back from day one when we started realizing that this is not something that will just you know pack one one backpack and then you just you know take out things and use them and do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. This is actually a process and this is something that needs uh, to last for for quite some time. And this is why I am happy to have. Uh, these link talks uh, from time to time just to uh, check up on, on people what uh, they already, uh, mm -hmm. what milestone they already reached and what mm -hmm. were uh, their uh, lessons learned uh, on their way and uh, to think of next steps in Bosnia and Herzegovina and it is uh, quite uh, related to uh, funds when it comes to needs assessment and I learned, Rosie, what is needs assessment, finally, <laughs> I know the difference. So uh, when it comes to needs assessment, uh, we need uh, money for that and uh, especially with our idea to cover not only uh, programmatic needs but also some uh, public funding needs or opportunities and find, uh, fundraising opportunities, it is going to be quite an effort, uh, both when it comes to human resources and financing. So this this is something that uh, we, we started realizing uh, once the training was done, that mm -hmm. this is not going to be uh, one year uh, kickoff project that mm -hmm. will roll out and everything will be perfect within one year, but uh, that we need mm, some more time. To, to, to achieve standard levels. Uh, so this is it, you. just my, my idea. Yeah. Thank you, Sinisha. It's very important, actually, because it just proves our approach towards implementation, because, as you know, that's why we, uh, from the very beginning, um, estimated few years uh, for achieving RBM standard level. Uh, per each program. That's why we mentioned that uh, from the very beginning that it cannot be done overnight and it's good that you just confirm our approach and no no uh, wonder why uh, that you had this expectation as you can see we also reduced our ambitions 
uh, overall on a global and regional level because we also now uh, realize that even with one Kiko workshop it's not enough you know further resources is, are needed to support countries with follow-up uh, in the second year especially of implementation of RBM therefore it's it's it it uh, we are on the same page of understanding and it's good definitely it just proves and uh, confirms our approach um, uh, what I wanted to ask you here, and this question mostly is now um, uh, directed towards Aksana, you and you, Sinisha. What would be your suggestion, uh, now looking back, uh, about this kick of meeting that we organized for NDs and NPDDs as just intro uh, meeting? Uh, to make sure that line management and program are on the same page of understanding of what RBM is and in order to support you to frame implementation of RBM um, uh, as a project. Uh, do you think it was a good idea or when you look back now you can say ah, actually we could even survive without this meeting? I think that was a good idea. Um, regarding content-wise, I think uh, nothing should be changed, but what I missed that time, and I still okay. need it, and I also raised this question, this is about uh, the process in line with other processes in the association. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Regarding the um, strategical planning, annual planning, budget, and, and all this, because it's important for the for us and also for the people everywhere to understand that this is not a separate process. It should be mm -hmm. integrated. And then the logical question goes: Then why should we work on these plans uh, separately, this separate plan like this? And then if we plan actions, for example, for the year, mm -hmm. then how what we should do with the logical framework and so on? I mean, if, if, if I'm clear. Uh, so you're not at all absolutely clear. Mm -hmm. So you would say that we need somehow to organize this process, uh, first of all, to make a clear connection to yes. uh, mm -hmm. annual and strategic and annual planning, I would say, most yes. of all, right? Mm -hmm. And also process-wise organizes workshops also uh, in such ways that they um, uh, they are organized before annual planning. This is what you mean. This yes. is where I'm not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This and also regarding templates, it's clear that still there will be separate templates, but at least uh, the processes can be somehow in line, not to to duplicate anything. And also regarding the time, also maybe add the same idea to what Sinisha told. Maybe some recommendations regarding the time frame. Although we had quite a good time, it was uh, spring in Belarus yes. for this our first location, but still uh, we felt a little bit not pressed, but um, anyway, because it was summertime, then when the autumn starts again, uh, a lot of other things, the other agenda, yes, yes and uh, associations should clearly understand how to plan it, should be very careful about it. And also we were in a hurry for the other two locations, we planned, for example, to uh, spent these um, trainings this year already mm -hmm. and we already see that for one association it or for one program it definitely will not happen first the reason is of course uh, a little bit different because for example the kicker workers are not at place at the moment mm -hmm. but still not to be in a hurry like this yeah like, uh -huh. like exactly like Sinisha told yeah uh-huh okay okay so <coughs> Aksana, <clears throat> your suggestion would be to organize Kiko workshops as early as possible in the year, right? Like beginning of spring um, even, maybe. Or? Sorry, I had some internet uh, connection uh -huh. problems. So you would, the you, very beginning. Yeah. Yeah. would you recommend to organize Kiko workshops in country even earlier, like beginning of spring? Yes. Uh -huh. I think okay. it's my opinion, yeah, it's better to do it like this. Yeah. So that you are ready with your plan even before September, right? And then it can be naturally integrated with the planning process. Exactly, yeah. This yeah, is what you important. mean. Okay, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. okay. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for this, this input. I mean, Irina, you were not part of this April meeting. That's why I uh, did not uh, maybe um, ask you about this first part of the question is not that relevant for you. But uh, what about the timeline for Kiko workshop? What would you recommend? Um, as you know, uh, starting uh, from uh, uh, 2019, um, mm -hmm. we, uh, we will implement in two different locations the RBM and we will uh, develop our RBM implementation uh, plan for two additional locations. So, of course, it's good if um, uh, this kickoff meeting will be at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I don't know if my question was suitable for this time, but uh, Aksana just mentioned about duplicating um, uh, some of um, processes. Mm -hmm. And as you know, uh, we uh, implement RBM uh, since this year in Organge. Yes. And yes, we have uh, the same. For example, we prepare a work plan for mm -hmm. next year for donor, as you know, uh, and also we prepare the uh, according to association to plan annual plan. So we have uh, the same targets, but we prepare two plans. Mm -hmm. And I think we should to optimize these processes because. Uh, um, we do the same work, but in two different format of document. And how to be? Aha, uh -huh, but uh, do you prepare the second document? Um, I mean, I do understand what you prepare for donors. This is a requirement. But yes. uh, the second one, which one do you exactly mean? The second plan? It's a plan based on uh, every location. We have three locations in Uzbekistan. Uh -huh. Every location. Here, have annual plan. Annual mm -hmm. plan, yes. And then they accumulated in the plan of association. And mm -hmm. these plans, uh, ND, uh, signed, approved okay. and signed. So it's the same information, but in okay. different format. So okay. we prepare two plans for one location, one on RBM for donor and one according to estos requirements and so we duplicate these processes maybe um, we can optimize uh, uh, this planning and pr plan preparation mm -hmm. uh, uh, irina what i can uh, uh, reply to this you know <coughs> I would not say that this is a requirement of RBM. This is something that you have to decide internally. Uh, to me personally, I mean, of course, I don't want now to intervene, intervene into the logic of how your national director, what uh, she's requesting from each of the program uh, to be done. It's, it's understandable that she's requesting to prepare uh, annual plan for each program, but I think that it's just a matter of discussing in the, in the, it internally. If uh, plans are duplicating each other, I would see definitely, but this is my personal opinion, I would easily see a possibility uh, of not having two plans with the same content in different templates. Why? I agree with you. But that is something I believe that should be discussed internally, because in case of RBM, there is no such requirement you know, to necessarily have one plan for as part of um, association planning process. If content-wise these two are overlapping, I also don't see a reason of having them. This is something you have to decide. I can imagine that you cannot uh, drop the plan which is requested by the donor. But if content-wise it can satisfy the requirements of annual planning process, why wouldn't you just agree with UND of keeping just one template, which is prepared for donor? Okay, but um, for example, for donor, it, this plan is more detailed, because if we just copy-paste to annual plan of association, it will be very, very big. Yeah, but you can extract some parts that are relevant, yeah. right? Yes. I mean, this is, I believe this is just a matter of internal agreement, Irina. Okay. okay. If it is more, de you know, if it is more detailed, it's good, because you just take so the only those parts that are relevant for your national plan, then. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. if that if it would be less detailed that it, it might be headaches then you need to add additional parts narratives and so on but if it is even more detailed than it uh, the other template, then I don't even see a problem just copy paste into annual plan of national association only those parts that are relevant. Okay. This is how I see it, but of course it's something that you have to agree internally within your team. Okay. I don't see a clear link here to RBM, except of RBM would definitely tell you optimize your processes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank okay, you very thank you, much. Uh, we will take into consideration, Rosie. I'm also making some notes about this Aksana's comment on trying to uh, optimize processes, time and content-wise, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And exactly. this is something related to what we are doing in any case in our regional RBM project, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's go on, Rosie. I hand over to you. Yeah, so as already announced uh, at the beginning, we'd love to hear a little bit more from you on, um, yeah, how it's going, how how uh, things have progressed regarding RBM since the workshop, um, any developments that you would like to share with the others, uh, what you're working on currently, if you have any challenges that you'd like um, input on from your peers. Yeah, so maybe we can start with that question first. Um, who would like to start uh, sharing a little bit? Some volunteers. I, I can do it uh, quite uh, briefly. Uh, well, after the workshop was uh, uh, finished, then uh, this documenting part started and we started preparing <clears throat> a plan for, for uh, all the activities and we were uh, discussing internally what were uh, what would be our next steps in future how it is related to the budget and uh, how the budget uh, can be spent in most effective and efficient way <clears throat> for, uh, establishing RBM system uh, we had as I mentioned, ideas that uh, think uh, things should uh, go much faster than, than they objectively can go. Uh, so this is why we had uh, quite frequent conversations uh, among team members uh, in this period uh, right after the training. And uh, actually what uh, is happening right now is kind of calm sea around us when it comes to RBM uh, due to the fact that uh, some other uh, projects uh, came up to the surface and taking place of uh, RBM as our priority, but it will not last for long because, uh, as, as we already know, some communication from your side and our side started regarding our plan and some uh, additional stuff that we need to do uh, with the documents we upload. So in the future uh, days or, or, or uh, until the, the end of this uh, month, we will definitely have some uh, solid idea of uh, on our next steps and most probably we will do uh, assessment of level of RBM uh, on national level because we finished it only for one uh, CVP, so we will do it for, for three more CVPs and for the national level. And this is uh, how most probably the year will end. Uh, after this uh, assessment, we will probably finish uh, deadlines and milestones, uh, wrap up all the documents that we uploaded and, and polish them, and then in, in, at the beginning of 1919, we, we will probably start with some, uh, let's say, serious serious work. Uh, our first step uh, will definitely be uh, to develop TOR uh, for needs assessment, and then in parallel to start working on uh, logical results framework uh, for for the services that we don't have such tools developed. And uh, this is uh, something that will be happening in Gračanica CVP, but with uh, the knowledge that and the team that they uh, have. Uh, in Gračanica, we will uh, 
just impose all that is happening in Gachanca to other locations, and especially smaller ones uh, with only uh, two services provided. So it is going to be quite an easy work uh, once we start rolling it out. But so far, it is just polishing documents, it's just preparation of uh, some uh, activities that we need to finish uh, until the end of this month or, or, or next month uh, latest. So this is it, where we are. Uh, thank you, Sinsha. By the way, you asked us to um, share with you a TOR for needs assessment, right? Some time ago, yes, I tried yes, yes. to I tried to get one for you from colleagues. I shared it in a global this request uh, in a global network, and uh, till now I have got two versions, two examples. Frankly speaking, before sending them to you, I wanted to check how good they are. But objectively, I I I don't have right now time to doing this. And on the other side, I mean, you have yourself enough knowledge and skills to distinguish uh, what you can use from those TURs if they are not um, overall, you know, perfect, but at least you may use some of parts of, of those examples. Therefore, I will not any more prolong time uh, hoping that I will have you know, any time slot to check uh, those TURs, but I will forward that to you. One is in English, another is in French, but you can use Google Translate. Yeah, 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 it's currently no worries. functions Thanks. quite well, so I will share this with you, okay? Uh, during Thank you this very week. much. Okay, okay, good. Uh, Aksana, maybe you? Mm -hmm. So, um, speaking about the Marina Gorka, uh, by the end of this year, we do plan to um, we are we are we are ready with the uh, so-called draft of the concept note and results framework and finish mm -hmm. according to the implementation timeline to finish it by the end of this year. And as I already told, not easy from the point of view of time. What I liked uh, and I think it can be used that. In Marina Gorka, we, together with the CVP director, we conducted like uh, raising awareness on RPM uh, training, and the participants were people from the locations. Some of them participated in the workshop that uh, Kirti, thank you, you conducted, and then the others also joined, and that was really very useful. Uh, because, uh, yeah, that was really good. And what I also liked, that was an idea of the director uh, to uh, let people, uh, we, in fact, we duplicated a bit what was already done, mm -hmm. but uh, they made the assessment of the stakeholders, what analysis mm -hmm. was still made again, but mm -hmm. uh, contributing uh, to it. And uh, one document, for example, was ma made only by the team. The director um, participated, but um, mm -hmm. Observing. And mm -hmm. really it was good when the people took their own responsibility for it yeah, and, and when they presented the results, the results were really very, very, very good. So, and I have a feeling that it's better to make uh, more, maybe shorter, like not trainings, but meetings uh, on RBM mm -hmm. approach, mm -hmm. because it's really helped people to understand uh, better this approach. Excellent. So, yeah, they select. And regarding the two other locations, I'm concerned, but I think it's normal <laughs> because mm -hmm. the process is quite complicated and we will do it. But the concern is definitely that to change uh, the opinion of people towards RBM as uh, to show them that this is really a very useful uh, tool, but mm -hmm. not something that disturbs and, and in addition to their routine work. This is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great to hear this. <laughs> Rosie? Yeah, actually, a question on that, because you mentioned that by the end of the year, you'd already have a draft concept note and results framework available. How are you um, kind of from national office side supporting the, the local team in, in developing those? Just quite practically, how, how is that process being organized? In this way, they, uh, they requested support on, only like consultative base. So they decided they we discussed before, 
with the team, for example, what should be put there, where it can be seen, and we define the resources. For example, we have some um, situations analysis and like this regarding this program and this location. Mm -hmm. And then we are also happy to have some project proposals, uh, public funding things that are implemented there, so they used it. And finally, mm -hmm. so they composed it on their own and Excellent. ask for feedback. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. And national office uh, participated in the uh, training that uh, Katie conducted. And during this training uh, in the location, only there were only two of us from the office, uh, national director and me. And most and conduction, con oh, sorry, conducting of the training was done by me and jointly with the CVP director. Great. Yeah, like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As far as I remember, Sinisha, you were thinking of going with a similar approach, right? That you and CVPDs together would yes. hold kind of smaller trainings. Uh, yes, uh, not not CVPDs, but uh, the team members actually from one location. We have a uh, coordinator, early childhood development center coordinator, uh, as a RBM team member. So she and I, we will do it together. Mm -hmm. Uh, just from my side, guys, you are very uh, free to choose the approach which is most suitable based on your experience and based on your feeling, you know, and knowledge of location. Um, from our side, of course, as a first kickoff workshop, we, we try to cover um, uh, all all RBM components and do a uh, quite structured workshop, you know, to, to do it in one go, of course, because it's for, for us, it would be mission impossible uh, to come for some bits and pieces, right, or to introduce them separately. But then the way you go to make sure that it is done in most effective and efficient way and that you spread really the message. Uh, properly and that it reaches the program people, uh, you're really free. I truly believe in this. Uh, therefore, please um, choose your own path and just share it with us because maybe we, we're going to learn then uh, and, uh, and share those experiences, right, Rosie, on a wider mm -hmm. scale? Exactly, yeah. We're learning a lot from you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Oksana. It's really amazing that you are almost done with results framework. It's really uh, amazing. I, I almost mm -hmm. done. It's not amazing. When it will be done. No, no, no. <laughs> it is amazing. Yeah. It's a big job. It's a big job. Don't uh, underestimate. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, yeah, looking forward. I hope you will be able to share with us at some point uh, mm -hmm. translated version or, or even, yeah, even Russian version, which I could take a look. If it yeah, is we will anyway, we are going to send and to ask for, for feedback. Excellent, excellent. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Very exciting and inspiring. Okay, Rosie, go on. Yeah, maybe um, Irina, you could share a little bit about uh, what's been going on in Uzbekistan. Um, yes, of course. Um, uh, after the workshop in Uz which was held in Uzbekistan in May, uh, with your support, thank you very much. Um, the logical framework for uh, Urgench um, location was finalized and approved by the PSA. Uh, and after that, we developed an ME system. But um, we think that it should be simplified and improved for the next year. Uh, also, we started to develop um, program idea for two locations in Samarkand and uh, Tashkent and we plan to develop a logical framework for these two locations by the end of this year. Uh, maybe uh, we will finalize it at the beginning of the next year. Uh, and uh, the colleagues from Tashkent like CVP, they disseminate especially CVPD who participate on the uh, kickoff workshop. Uh, they uh, this training um, with our colleagues, with the colleagues of um, location, and uh, 
try to do need assessment themselves, like uh, pattern analysis and uh, stakeholder analysis, and they prepare brief report. Also on these uh, exercises. Um, also, we plan to update our monitoring and uh, evaluation uh, manual uh, starting from the next year. Uh, and uh, in order to um, uh, to to make it more result oriented, because um, the report which our colleagues from location prepare is still activity based, and uh, uh, this was a comment from uh, one of the donor, uh, and I think we uh, should to review. Uh, these uh, guidelines on monitoring and evaluation and um, up, maybe update it mm -hmm. um, uh, according to the RBM um, Logic. approach. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, so this is what we done and what we plan to do. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks Amazing. very much. Mm -hmm. Amazing, you know, I'm I'm really, I'm just sharing now from the bottom of my heart, these feelings are coming that when I hear people in programs did needs assessment, you know, paste themselves and da, 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 I see like uh, things are alive. And this is what we, what makes us happy, right, Rosie? Mm -hmm. Most of all, because uh, that would be kind of a very big failure if you, if if everything stops at the level of uh, kick off workshop, of course, and then, uh, oh my name, uh, and if most of the things would still be on your plate, you know, in the national offices, that would be really, um, so to say, yeah. Um, a situation to which we would need to react somehow, but what we, what we hear, we can see the approach alive and getting slowly anchored in the program, and that's really amazing, really, really, that gives us a lot of hope and motivation. Uh, Irina, also, I, I just would mention because I know you are going, unless you mentioned that, you are also going to do a baseline studies next year, right? To yes, for the, uh, your results framework. Yes, yes, for this uh, log frames for new location. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, we plan to conduct baseline study to collect the data. Mm -hmm. After the frameworks are pre prepared, basically, yes, and uh, draft. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Excellent, excellent. Perfect. Yeah, and um, maybe we could just link now, because we only have about eight minutes left, but in yes. terms of kind of support measures for next year, um, we'll come to that at the end. And um, yeah, now I hand over back to, uh, to Ketty on yeah. the regional RBM project. Or maybe, you know, maybe we could really come to the support actions, mm -hmm, Rosie, mm -hmm. and then uh, come back to regional uh, plan. Just to say very shortly, for your information, we are in the pro global team is in the process of updating training materials and it will be updated by the beginning of January 2019. It will be a big, um, <laughs> it, it will be a help, helpful for you as well because for instance um, our RBM lead in international uh, office got a feedback that for example some template should be revised. Uh, this w feedback came from the trainers also. Um, you actually were also invited, if you remember, I don't know how much you managed to provide a feedback uh, to RBM materials, but based on this input that they have collected, the training material will be updated uh, in January already, so you will be able to use it uh, for your new locations while conducting trainings, um, and it will be quite useful. Uh, then another issue is that we will have another round of trainer tra of trainer workshop in January 2019, where we will have um, um, IO will train new group of trainers uh, that will next year support implementing RBM in in countries. And in this respect, we have Aktana here in our group, who will be also trained and will be part of this global trainers pool. Uh, 
Um, and I'm sure, Aksana, this will give you a possibility to organize, to be uh, more confident, right, in conducting trainings in your own member association. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah, but also supporting uh, other countries. So I'm looking forward to your feedback after the training, yeah, after you yeah. accomplish this training in January. Uh, so we will stay in touch in uh, about about it, and also on a global level, reflection meeting is being planned, for which uh, initially, Sinisha, you remember, and uh, Aksana, you, there was a uh, IO was considered a possibility for representatives of member associations to participate in this meeting, but at the end, the decision is, I think, that this, tra this will be more a reflection meeting for current uh, global RBM trainers, like for me and Rosie, it will be re refresher uh, training for us, and uh, it won't be that uh, big part devoted to reflection uh, on, uh, uh, as uh, they decided that maybe it's uh, too early to do a big reflection meeting, and most probably a bigger reflection meeting with direct face-to-face uh, -face participation from the country representatives will be organized in 2020. So basically, uh, yeah, um, most probably we will contact you more for, for virtual input, uh, and um, the physical meeting will be in 2020 for reflection. Yeah, this is just for your information. And now let me very shortly come to um, status quo uh, of regional project. Here I won't go into uh, details. I just want to let you know what we, as a regional RBM project team, are busy with. Um, likewise, you have your, your national RBM project teams. On a regional level, we have established regional RBM project team, which consists of uh, myself as RBM project manager, Rosie, uh, line management, which is represented by Caroline uh, as a CBI rep, uh, uh, Wolfi as a representative of finance and control area, uh, Sophie who is MSA for several countries, so responsible for some processes. Aladdin as a representative of fund development, uh, because a lot of knowledge on RBM is also anchored with this function. And also Rusudan is part of this project team as a head of program. So in this uh, project, um, uh, this project team is busy with several activities which uh, should ideally support implementation of RBM in the region. So first thing that is basically accomplished, we have prepared a three years RBM implementation plan, which is detailing actually actions and uh, uh, estimates uh, needed resources in order for us from the regional level to be able and equipped with time resources, financial resources, or relevant capacity and skills to support member associations with the implementation of RBM. And these three years, our uh, implementation plan is basically ready, submitted for IDR's approval right now, and as soon as it is approved, we will share it with you so that you know who are the trainers, uh, how the member associations will be supported, <coughs> what are the key objectives for us in the region to be achieved with implementation of RBM, and so on and so on. Second objective for our regional RBM project team, and I would say this is apart from practical implementation in the member associations, uh, one of the most important objectives is um, about building or developing a proper support and monitoring structure uh, that will ensure that on the one side, we are supporting countries with implementation, and on the other side, we're steering 
implementation in member associations. And for this purpose, actually, we have prepared or developed a system uh, which defines roles and responsibilities between line management and basically program function, program area, for supporting and steering monitoring implementation of RBM in member associations. I would say is these are the key uh, objectives uh, for our RBM uh, project. Uh, together with maybe what is most important for you, um, also important for you, is um, uh, optimizing this last work package, um, uh, trying to look into our current planning, monitoring and reporting requirements uh, towards member associations and trying to align these requirements to RBM approach and optimize them whenever possible. This is something which is linked exactly that you, to what you have mentioned, Aksana, to make sure that our existing processes are really adjusted to RBM approach, that they are, um, you know, time-wise adjusted, content-wise adjusted, and if we see some duplications uh, in existing processes to optimize them check which process requirements are redundant, let's say, and then uh, drop them. Rosie, would you add anything to this? Um, no, I think that summarizes quite well. It's mm -hmm. a work in progress as well, so um, yeah, some of the things, especially this last point, it's kind of where what we've done so far is a, a similar ac activity to the information needs analysis that, um, yeah, is also in the RBM toolkit for programs. So, yeah, now it's kind of very nitty gritty work of also coordinating different functions and seeing how we can optimize as much as possible. So it's um yeah it's an ongoing on an ongoing work and process for the for the coming year as well. Yes, mm. yes. As you can see from this progress um, uh, chart, or yeah, uh, we are quite uh, well uh, uh, on track with uh, first. Um, uh, two work packages or actions. Uh, as I mentioned, RBM implementation plan is finalized and uh, submitted for approval. Also, RBM uh, monitoring system uh, is already prepared. It will distinguish also your responsibilities, like, okay, what are you... Um, um, what are the components of RBM implementation for which you will be requested to inform us? I can give you an example. For instance, once per year you will be requested, which is quite logical, to uh, do um, update of uh, your RBM level. Yeah, to, to revise basically this checklist, which we did together during the kickoff workshop, and submit it to us so that we can follow up. Have you made any progress towards uh, achieving standard RBM level in your programs? Yeah, or for example, whenever you would develop a results framework, for your existing programs, you would be expected to share this results framework with us um, um, in order to, for us to be able to provide a feedback, but also to, to in, in any case, it's part of uh, development of your concept node and uh, results framework for, for programs to be aware of what are your plans. Right, and what are uh, key objectives that you want to achieve with your programs. So this system will detail responsibilities on your side, but also responsibilities on our side, who is engaged in approval process and feedback process, and um, yeah, what are the roles and responsibilities in general. So you will soon actually also receive this um, document from our side, and of course you will have a possibility to provide your feedback in case you have some uh, additional suggestions um, uh, for improvement or, or there is any need for clarification. And last but not least, what I wanted to mention is that the next year you will, of course, 
you can of course rely on our can rely on our support would it be a virtual feedback process to um, deliverables uh, of your implementation uh, actions would you require feedback on log frames or on concept notes you can always uh, come back to us uh, as discussed with some of you already in individual talks um, in addition what we plan we know we got request for instance from Uzbekistan to facilitate uh, RBM Kiko workshop in remaining two locations and it will be done in Uzbekistan most probably again Rosie and me will uh, come and facilitate this workshop uh, to support Irina a little bit as she is rather new um, um, and would re yeah asked us for this kind of support as far as I know in case on Bo of Bosnia Sinisha you are mm, you feel yourself quite confident and will do it yourself Right. Uh, I would rather give it to someone else, but uh, <laughs> still, still, uh, I will have it in my hands. Yes, good, good. But of course, if you need any kind of support, you can always come back to us with uh, preparing of program or agenda or whatsoever in in clarifying how to how to lead this or that session. Please don't hesitate to come back to us. And uh, in case of Belarus, I believe there won't be need for support because Aksana will become herself an RBM trainer. Right, Aksana? <laughs> but I'm not yet. That's why for us, for example, there is a possibility, for example, yeah, because I'm not trained so far. We can yes. facilitate, yeah. Okay, but in any case, let's talk about means of support after you undergo this uh, okay. trainer of trainers okay. workshop, okay? Okay, okay. So we are slightly over time, but all in all, quite, uh, quite on time, I would say. From our side, this is all we wanted to share. Are there any open questions still from your side, or any issues you would ask us to take into consideration, considering our uh, work plans for no. upcoming year? No, from my side, no. No? Okay. I will feel free to contact you, to bother you. Okay. Thanks. Anytime. Anytime. You will get needs assessment uh, templates, TORs from my side. And Thanks. with Irina, I know quite well what to expect. Right? Mm -hmm. Sorry? Irina, from your side, I know what are your requests and uh, I'm yes. just waiting. <laughs> Yes, yes. I guess, I guess, Irina, you got some time slot as you made this budget shift for baseline assessments to next yes. year. <clears throat> now I think you can uh, take a bit more time for finalization of results framework. You are yes. not that much in a hurry, right? Yes. I would, being at your place, I would use this opportunity not to push, push yourself, but to do it um, in a more, let's say, relaxed regime. Yes, yes, it will be good if uh, this shift uh, will be approved and we have it is, time. It is approved already. Oh, yes, because yeah, I yeah, yeah. have this message about approval. Oh, uh, it's nice. I mean, I mean it is uh, sent by Dilnoza, right? Uh, to uh, your financial manager for approval? Um, maybe because I'm not in the copy and as I'm not in touch, ah. I don't have this information. Okay, uh, I will I will find this email and I will forward it to uh, you. Thank you. It's good and we have uh, much time to um, prepare a more quality exactly. uh, 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 frame. Please check it with your ND. Yes, Just I do not to create any confusion, but uh, to my understanding, as as soon as this information is sent to financial managers, if there are no more, you know, questions or uh, requests for further clarification, basically there is no obstacle for money transfer for shift. Yes, 
but it's good. Please clarify it. Yes, of course. Upon my back to Tashkent, I will do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, then. Rosie, anything from your side? No. It was nice um, to hear all your updates. And, uh, yeah, next year we'll also be offering these exchange um, platforms. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think that for this year we are done and we will come. We can open 2019 with next uh, virtual call. Mm -hmm. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you so much Thank for you. participation and sharing. It was really, really very important for us. And thank you, Kate and Rosie, for supporting and motivating also. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We'll Rosie, can I ask you just for two minutes more, sure. please? Sure. Okay. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, bye, guys. Bye. Ciao, Katie. See you around. Uh, Rosie, I just wanted to ask you uh, for, for support. Uh, I am looking, I was looking, uh, last week for uh, the church.